As we continue with complex numbers, I want to take a moment and remind or um, remind those of you that have had pre-cal what a polar coordinate is and um, introduce that idea to someone who hasn't seen it before. Um, so what happens is instead of graphing a point um, in a Cartesian plane where you have your your x and your y-axis and you've gone over 1, 2 and up 1, 2, 3 or, or whatever and you have this point right here instead of, if you think about it, this this is a, a rectangular grid. Can you see, like, if you were to, to dot this out, that grid, um, the coordinates are, are we, we call this either Cartesian form, um, sorry, or rectangular. Sorry, I should really get better at this. Okay. Um, the other option is what we call polar form. And with polar form, you have um, a radius and an angle. Okay, so it's, um, it's written as r theta, no, or theta r. Okay, I need to do a little reviewing. Um, but it doesn't completely matter if I get the order correct or not for, um, for today's lesson. So here's the point, and if you had pre-cal before, um, you've seen this. If you haven't, let me show you what's going on. So say we have the point right here. Um, with that point, we have we've, um, the angle that we've gone to get up to that is pi over 4. You can see that labeled here. And the radius, there's, it's 1, 2, 3. So that is um, that point there has a, a, an angle of pi over 4 and a radius of 3. Okay, so that was something we did a bit in pre-cal, and it, it definitely shows up as you keep going in further math. Um, but the reason that we care about it is that we're going to start writing our complex numbers in terms of polar situations. Okay, so let's continue. With this one, they don't, talk, they don't call it the angle, they call it the argument of z. Okay, so, um, so this angle right here would be that, that angle theta is called the argument of z, and sometimes notice this notation, they say the um, argument of z or something like that. And so what they're asking is, okay, well, how big is that, is that angle? They want to know um, if, this is your, if this is your a value, this is your b value, what, how big is that angle? Um, so remembering back to the, the trig that we've done, we can say that tangent of the argument is equal to b over a. And so we can calculate the angle if we, if we have that information. So if we have our, our complex number z, which is equal to a plus bi, okay, and I've just kind of sketched something out so we see what we're talking about, we can, we can relate um, the, the modulus of z and that argument of z, or in this case I drew it as theta, in terms of a and b. Okay, so notice we can say um, that that sine of theta would equal uh, what b over the argument of z. Keep in mind from before argument I lied. That's not the argument. That's the modulus. Keep in mind that the modulus is the length. How far is this complex number from the origin? Okay, um, and so if we want to solve for this b value. This b value would be the argument of z times sine of theta. Okay. Likewise, we could say that um, cosine of theta is equal to a over the argument of z. So a is the argument of z. I keep saying argument. I mean modulus. I make these videos too early in the morning. This is a problem. Um, I haven't done anything with the argument yet. Everything I've said on this slide should be modulus. My bad. Um, okay. So... A is equal to the modulus of z times cosine of theta. So what we can do here is we have a different way. Um, there's times when we may only know the modulus. That's not the modulus. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We may only know the modulus of z, and we may only know the argument of z. How big is this angle? And so if we want to write that in A plus B I form, then what we have to do is we have to say that A is the modulus of z times cosine of theta plus the modulus of z times sine theta times i. 
this whole thing gets multiplied by i. And what we do as mathematicians, or maybe I should have written, if I take this i, instead of writing it here, I write it out in front, i times that. What we like to do, mathematicians are inherently um, efficient. So we would say the modulus of z times, we, we can factor that out, and this is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Well, we have a shorthand for that. Um, and that is, here's where we're, we're looking up here. Um, we have a shorthand for that um, cosine theta plus i sine theta, and we like to say cis. We do take the, the c, the i, and the s. So this would become the modulus of z cis theta, and that's cosine plus i sine theta. So here's how our book talks through that. They point out to us that um, this point P has an x-coordinate of the radius, um, or we might, in a minute, we'll talk about that being the modulus of z, um, times cosine of theta, and then the y value is the radius times sine of theta. And so they use this shorthand, cis theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And so then the complex number can be written as the modulus of z times cis theta. Um, and then we'll talk in a, in a second. If you remember, um, if this is a plus bi, then a minus bi would be just a reflection over the real axis. Okay, so what that has done is instead of having a a positive theta this way, you now have a negative theta. So they're showing you here that the conjugate in polar form is going to be the modulus of z cis negative theta. There's a third way of writing a complex number, and that's known as Euler's form. Um, and they point out to you here that we, we derive this identity in chapter 27. So I I'm not going to really go into why this is true, um, but what happens is um, we can take our complex number and write it as r times e to the i theta. Um, okay, so for example, they're giving us the point. Um, uh, this would be this would be the the complex number z equals one plus i, um, because it's gone over one in the real direction, um, and then one in the complex direction. Um, so notice, this becomes a 45-45-90 triangle. It's theta there. We're going to stick to radians is pi over 4. And so the cis form, well, and then we need to know how long it is. Well, if you remember back from geometry, it's 1, 1, root 2. So that's the, the modulus of this complex number. Um, so when we write it in cis form, we can say that this z value, um, this is polar form, it becomes the, the modulus, root 2, cis, our angle, which was pi over 4. Okay, um, and that's, an, that's the, so we have form number 1, equation, you know, Cartesian form, um, a plus bi form, and then polar form would be our option 2. And then Euler's form is option 3, and that becomes, we would say, okay, well, z is equal to the modulus times e to the i theta, which was pi over 4. Those, that's the exponent up there. So the next thing they're asking us to do is to practice writing it in polar form. Um, so sometimes I like to look through this and kind of visualize where it is. Okay, so if we're at 2i, that means we've gone two units in the imaginary direction. We've gone nowhere in the real direction. So this has a... Um, the modulus of z here is 2. We've just moved 2 units away from 0. And then this, this angle, this theta, coming up this way is pi over 2. Okay? So this becomes 2 cis pi over 2. Or we could say it's 2 e to the, well, pi over 2i, or, or however you want to write that. Um, okay, so that's the first one. The next one has negative 3. Well, that's only on the real axis. And so it's gone three units away, but this angle right here is pi. Okay, so this is three cis pi, or you could say it's three e to the pi i, or i pi. Three, I guess we say three to the i pi more often. Um, and that's that one. The next one looks a little familiar to us in that um, 
we've seen a one and one situation. So this is one and then a negative one. Okay, so we're coming something like this. So this, you could either call this negative pi over 4, or you could call it positive 7 pi over 4. I don't care which, oh, um, I don't care which one. I think that they may prefer, I think often they do from negative pi to pi. So in that case, I'm sorry about my bad handwriting. In that case, we wouldn't want to use 7 pi over 4. We'd want to use the negative pi over 4. And we saw this example just a second ago, so it's got a modulus of root 2. Um, so this is root 2 cis negative pi over 4. That's a negative sign, my bad. Um, or then root 2 e to the negative pi over 4 i. In this last example, they're asking us to go from polar form to Cartesian form. Okay, and so you notice here, well, this is where you want to make sure you remember what that cis mess means. Um, and it means this is root 3 times cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. And here is where we are really glad we still remember our unit circle. So this is root 3 times cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. And now we want to distribute through. This becomes a negative 3 halves plus, plus we got to distribute through here, and this becomes, um, I'm so sorry, this becomes root 3 over 2 times i. And this is the Cartesian form of the point that they had given us up here in polar form.